Today, I'd like to give a first part of a presentation about the importance of women and girls, teenagers, whatever it might be, in helping to form a Bloomington Public Library. And uh, we'll be going back for a little bit into the late 1800s when there was a subscription type library. In other words, like a shareholder the way the Blakes Prairie Fair was at the time. Uh, you, you paid uh, your dues or whatever for membership. And so it was not a free kind of thing, in other words, free use of type thing. And that was, there was a Bloomington Library Association that was located above where the post office is now, uh, back in uh, the early 1880s. And uh, there were different uh, volumes that were added to, but it was a subscription type. And uh, actually, uh, one of the bankers at the time, I think in 1883, was actually sort of the librarian in charge of that. Now, because there was no newspaper saved from those days, from 1883, uh, until about 1897. Uh, we really don't know what happened to that. But in 1901, the Bloomington record editor wondered, why can't Bloomington have a public library? And uh, so the ladies, the members of the Selma Gundy Club, they were starting up about uh, the beginning of the uh, 1900s and they thought we should be able to do that. At the time there was sort of a traveling library collection from the state and they thought well we can add to that but let's see what we can do. Well they got together and one thing about the Selma Gundy Club the ladies there I think many of them were wives of the businessmen in town. And so I think maybe a little arm twisting took place there and uh, sort of to give them a little more encouragement, can we maybe uh, get the village uh, uh, board uh, interested in uh, trying to help with this a little bit? So uh, eventually they, they got some petitions going, the Selma Gundy Club, and the ladies of course uh, once they got the thing rolling there, and that took place in March of 2008, they were in what was the Lance Music Store for a short period of time, and had a room there. And then they kind of quickly went to the north side of Main Street, where the old uh, bank was. And the, the old bank building existed until I think about 1969 and there was a fire so that got torn down. But they were located in there for a while and the ladies were doing the work, uh, running the library, raising funds, all kinds of things, helping there keep it going and also would try to get some help, which they did, from the uh, village board. And at the time there, one of the times they received $50, but we have to remember at that time that was a lot more money. We figured that was about $1,350 in today's money. So that was a nice sizable donation. And uh, that really helped out. And then the other big thing I want to mention is that there were several people and notice how it was broken down. They had ones who donated a half dollar's worth, eight people. But remember, probably took all day long to try to make a dollar or a longer. So that value there is very important that each one was at, would be worth about $27 today. There were 31 people who gave $1. Still a big deal, remember how long it takes. And then there was a few for $5, $3, and maybe one or two with $10. And there you see 
some of the list of people there was quite a number, ended up that there was about $94.25 donated, which was a big sum of money back then, remember. And with the $50 from the village, this was helping. Still more money was needed, but the, the interest was there. The ladies helped this and they kept this going. And later on, we'll be talking in part two later at a different time that uh, what they did when the village more or less sort of took over, gave it a place for a permanent home. Because after the bank building, they were in the old J.B. Ludden White store upstairs for a while. Fortunately, they got to go where the location for the Bloomington Floral is for a while. So when the building, Ludden building, the former Ludden building burned, it was owned by a Chicago person, uh, our stuff was saved. And uh, of course, the uh, library got to come into uh, the present location uh, took place in 1939. You'll find out in our next broadcast uh, what it was like then. Uh, we don't have newspapers of any kind that existed, but we don't have anything to refer to for 1939 and 1940. But that'll be another interesting thing. Plus, we'll find out again how important the ladies were concerning the library. Talk about this stuff. Okay, we have on the table here several uh, different books there that we don't always have upstairs, but they're down here. This is Country Ways, this old farm showing lots of tractors of different periods of time. The Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. And of course, remember that in Purdy Sheen or over in the McGregor area, that that's where they got to start. So they're part of our local area. They're not just over in Baraboo or way off in Florida someplace as they were later on. Uh, Giants in the Land, Folk Tales and Legends of Wisconsin. Uh, we have a couple of those copies there. Always interesting when some of the folk tales and legends that people have, and we have different books too, not showing right here, but on ghosts and stories and people maintaining, well, yes, there's strange things that happen here and there. Nobody can explain. And uh, here another one, we have different ones on the one room country schools. And the Thrashing Days, that's very good because of the famous uh, uh, artist here, uh, Laverne Cameroon, and of course, uh, Chester Garthwaite did the writing, the narrative there. For the book. They're all nice color pictures in there, the way it used to be in farming. And you see they really are very interesting and uh, most are color there but there's always introduction but just showing what it was like with the horses, the old ways of doing things, a lot of hand labor and horses were very extremely important. Otherwise, things wouldn't have gotten done. So that's some of what uh, what we have available. Just just a little just a little taste of it, but that uh, we'll be talking uh, more about things in uh, part two, which will be at a later time.